because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Razaban IFL TV proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're here in Bournemouth ahead of a Cody Billum Smith. With me, the Omen, Spencer Oliver. Spencer, looking a bit red, mate. Raz, mate, I've just done like a live stream for two hours, yeah, not realising how hot it is here in Bournemouth. It's like being abroad, mate. It's insane. Me and the Savage, he's just walked past. Look at him. Look, he's all bronzed up. Look at that. Mate, it was so, so warm down here. So, um, yeah, the boxing... Gods are with us, and we've got the weather, man. It's going to be wicked on Saturday night. Vitality Stadium, 15,000 people. Lawrence O'Coley versus Chris Billum smith is going to be unbelievable, man. It, yeah, it's, it's going to be a night to remember. Let's not complain about being, it, being warm. Oh, no, it could be raining. It. Mate, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Look, I come from home yesterday. I'm not going to lie. I try to brave, brave it by going out in just a jumper, thinking, yeah, all right, 18 degrees or whatever. But it was cold, mate. Cold. I'll come down here, and I swear to God, I'm like, it's not being abroad. And I love the sun. So I'm happy, man. That was brilliant, by the way. The open workouts were really good here on the pier as well. Something different. You know, the settings are unreal. Lawrence Akoli looked totally focused. Looked actually, his timing looked better. His timing looked better. Everything looked good, mate, I've got to say. Um, sorry about that. I know. Yeah, so everything looked good, man. He looked better than he did against David Light. He looked focused, and he's got to be in this fight because he's got to perform better than what he did against David Light. It was a flat, lacklustre performance, really, you know, and it looked like he was sort of cross, caught between styles. I think that he knows that, and I think that he'll raise his game a bit against Billum Smith. You know, they were once friends, now rivals. There's a lot on the line, man, a lot on the line with both of these guys. They know each other inside out, but it's different when you've got the small gloves on. You know, one fundamental mistake, and it could be lights out. You know, Billum Smith's got to be careful. He doesn't get carried away with the atmosphere, get caught up with the crowd, go in there and take a chance too soon. And for, as, as for Lawrence as well, you know, he's got to be careful, you know, that he doesn't get caught one as well. It's a, it's a fascinating fight. It really is 50 uh, 50. In terms of the, the pressure on, on, on Chris, you know, he's, he's been asking for this. He's asking for a stadium fight. He's got it now. And, and Lawrence as well. Lawrence has his second fight now with Sugar Hill. Obviously, we saw the David Light performance. Uh, are you concerned about a Cody gum going straight into a Campbell? Do you think that does that that does him well for this fight? I think it does him well for this fight. You know, because they were still very much learning, getting to know each other. Um, it, him and Sugar Hill, and I think we could see that in that Lawrence's performance last time out. Like I say, he looked like he was caught between styles at times. I think that extra time now, going straight back into camp, working. You know, trying to right the wrongs of that last fight and I think that we saw there the timing was better than, than, than I saw it before with Lawrence he looks mentally focused I chatted to him earlier yeah and he's, he's switched on he knows they both know the task ahead of them you know they both talk about how hard and how competitive them spars were um, and only time will tell on that Saturday night man you know homeward fighting could be crucial for William Smith in this fight because you know both guys are probably going to have to go to a dark place and you know because that's how I see the fight. I see it as a, as a long, hard fight. Shane McGuigan knows Lawrence Cody very, very well, knows his good points, knows his bad points. So how does um, Lawrence prepare, or what do you think his preparation has been, knowing that Shane will know his, his kind of weaknesses as well? Well, he's been working on different stuff, hasn't he? So Shane doesn't know that, what he's been working on. Sugar Hill is a great fighter, you know. He can implement good tactics into a fight. We've seen that, you know, with Tyson Fury, see it with Ben Whitaker as well. He's a good trainer. He knows his stuff. I've spoke to him, you know, many times we've had a sit down chatting about just, you know, certain fights, you know, how people would win and lose fights, you know, what people would have to do. He's, he's, he's a tactician, he's a student of the game. And, you know, he would be working on stuff. He couldn't believe when he went with Lawrence Coley that Lawrence was actually a world champion. So it was just his raw strength and his awkwardness that got him to where he got to. He said, but when, so once I put into him and refine him the way that I want to, he's going to be pretty unbeatable. So, yeah. Got a prediction? Yep. Prediction. It's a tough one to call, mate. It really is at the moment. I can't really call it. I can't really call it at the moment. Um, if I lean one way, maybe towards Billum Smith with home advantage and just that, you know, that he might just out-hustle him because he's the workhorse. Lawrence is one of those guys that likes to control the pace, fight at his own pace, look for that big long right hand. Chris will know that as well. 
Um, it's what Lawrence can change, what you know, what he can change, what he can bring to the table. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Saturday night is going to be a big night. We've got a first glimpse of them two there, and I've got to say they're both up for it, man. They're both focused and they're both in great shape. So yeah, Saturday night is going to be a big night. Spence, I might drive up here. I'll just listen to your podcast with uh, Simon Jordan. As yep. always, keeps me entertained during my journeys. Um, you spoke at the beginning about. Tyson Fury and yeah. about obviously the, the rumours that he might be fighting Dempsey McKean yeah. next or the potentially in talks right now mm -hmm. um not happy with that? No, 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 I'm not happy with it. I just think that, you know, we've had seen Tyson Fury against Dillian White. We saw him against Derek Chisora. I want to see Tyson Fury in a meaningful fight now. You know, I know he's tried to get Andy Ruiz. Um, he said, that, you know, that he outpriced himself. I know he's been looking at other big names in the division, but we need to see him in with a big fight now. Dempsey McKean doesn't really whet the appetite for me, and I'm sure it won't for most of the boxing fans as well. You know, we do, do we really want to see that fight? No disrespect to Dempsey, Dempsey McKean, but what I'm saying is that I think when you're fighting Tyson Fury in this stage of Tyson Fury's career, I think you have to have earned that right somewhat. You know, I know they're talking about this four-man competition, but that's not cemented at the moment. So if he's going to fight in the summer, I want to see him with a meaningful fight. You know, like, you know, we're talking about Anthony Joshua, maybe seeing Anthony Joshua, Dillian White in the summer. People would want to see that, like, because of two recognisable names. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's where I'm at with it, I think. that You know, I want to see Tyson Fury in with a recognisable name. Um, and that's no disrespect to McKean. I'll just say, I'll just, I'm talking about Tyson Fury here and where he sits. Last one for me, Spence. I know it's hot and we will catch up again tomorrow. Um, obviously, Liam Smith, Eubank Jr. is not far away now. Yeah. Um, there were some, some news that came out that he's bringing in David Hay to kind of give him some extra support alongside Roy Jones Jr. Just kind of your reaction to that. Well, I think Eubanks plays on a psychological game. And I think that bringing David Hay in, he may be trying to play that. But look, Liam Smith's too long in the tooth, too old in the tooth to to any of that you know well David Hay was a great and excellent talent unbelievable talent you know uh, maybe he can add something to Eubank Jr but will it confuse him trying to add more stuff to him you know he's been caught between styles before is it a good thing is it a bad thing only time will tell but you know Chris is one of those guys that he'll do what he wants to do Liam Smith it ain't broke he won't try and fix it he's just gone back to the drawing board doing what he does getting himself in the best possible condition but Let's see if David Hay can add something. It's definitely an interesting twist anyway. Spence, it's hot here. My back's hot. Yeah, Let's listen up. Your uh, back, mate. My face is burning, man. I know you need to go, but I appreciate it. We'll catch up yeah. with you tomorrow. Yeah, Spence tomorrow, Oliver, tomorrow. IFA TV. Thank you tomorrow, very much. Tomorrow. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never, never shot up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 